G'day, Troy Dean from WP Elevation, and welcome to episode 70, bloody six, of the WP Elevation podcast. Can you believe it? Episode 76. Wow, I remember when we started out and getting to episode 10 and thinking, wow, we're onto something here. I look back at those early episodes now and they're horrible. I'm horrible. I'm nowhere near as comfortable on those podcast episodes as I am now. Just goes to show that um, with practice comes confidence. Uh, episode 76, our feature guest this week is Jason Lemieux from Postmatic. If you're thinking about transitioning away from client services into a product company, or well, Jason is doing just that with Postmatic. It's a plugin that allows you to comment on a WordPress site by email. That's pretty cool. Think about how that could increase the engagement on your website. This is a great episode. It's long uh, because there's lots of great stuff in it. We talk about uh, Make Plus, the awesome drag and drop builder, which Jason's giving a copy away of, uh, by the way. Uh, in the competition, so stick around for details on that. We talk about uh, non-profits and the truth about non-profits not having any budget for web development. We talk about the importance of defining your niche and doing good work. Stay with us, let's elevate. This is the WP Elevation Podcast, helping WordPress consultants elevate. The competition this week, Jason is giving away a copy of Make Plus, the um, drag and drop theme and uh, plugin for uh, WordPress. I think it's a theme actually, it's a drag and drop theme. Chris Lemmer loves Make Plus. He's been raving about it. The big thing with Make Plus is that um, it is a drag and drop layout and page builder, but if you switch themes, you don't lose all your content to short codes, which is what happens with some of the other solutions in this space. So Chris Lemmer is a big fan of Make Plus. I've been hearing very good things about it. I haven't had a chance to take it for a good spin myself yet, but one of you lucky listeners is going to get that opportunity because uh, Jason is buying a copy of it and giving it away as the prize this week. How nice is that? In order to enter that competition, you need to leave a comment underneath this video and tell Jason the number one thing you would like to see in the WordPress comments function. Why? Because Jason's new plugin is called Postmatic and it allows you to post comments to a WordPress post via email. Think about it, you get a notification on your phone, you check your email, you reply to that email and it posts a comment to that WordPress site. Pretty nifty, huh? There's some cool stuff happening with Postmatic. I'm very excited about the launch of it. Uh, so in order to win a copy of Make Plus valued at $99, a single site license, leave a comment under this video and tell Jason the number one feature you would like to see in the WordPress commenting system. This episode of the WP Elevation podcast is brought to you by Video User Manuals, the best, the only, the original way to teach your clients how to use WordPress. For those of you that don't know, we started this plugin way back in 2008 where we decided to make some video tutorials to automate the process of teaching our clients how to use WordPress. My business partner, Brian, very cleverly made it into a plugin. I made the videos and we put it up online and it's been going strong ever since. Uh, right now, it puts over 85 video tutorials in your client's WordPress dashboard to teach them how to use WordPress, how to use SEO by Yoast, WooCommerce and Google Analytics. Of course, you can switch off any video or whole sections of videos if they're not relevant. You can add your own videos. You can put your own logo on it. You can use our embed codes to embed uh, the uh, videos in your own membership site. You can take all the kudos for it. Uh, and uh, it's $24 a month uh, to install on all of your clients' websites, which is just stupid. And we give it to you for $1 for your first month to try it out. So get on over to videousermanuals.com and try it out and uh, save hours, no longer teaching your clients how to use WordPress and answering those same stupid questions over and over again, like how do I upload an image to my website? Or you know, uh, how do I you know, add a post to my blog? Or how do I add a hyperlink to my page? We'll just handle all of that for you by putting, as I said, over 85 video tutorials in the back end of your client's WordPress dashboard. All right, I hope that makes sense. Get over to videousermanuals.com to take it for a spin. Right now, let's get back to the show. All right, our feature guest this week, as I mentioned in the introduction, is Jason Lemieux from Vermont. He is Canadian. We talk about the pronunciation of his name and why I will continue to be inconsistent and getting it wrong <laughs> because I'm an idiot. Sorry, Jason. Uh, we talk about um, transitioning away from client services into becoming a product company and the challenges that faces. These guys are bootstrapping their product company. They've spent a year working on it. Well, they've committed to spending a year working on it with no revenue. Figure that out. 
Um, it's inspirational stuff to actually just throw everything you've got, all your resources behind a product that you really believe in. Jason also talks about why some big projects are just bad for business and more damaging to the business than smaller projects. Um, and also he talks about the importance of getting out of the building and onto the farm. This is a cracker of an episode. Jason's got some really great advice for consultants and it's really great to get an insight into what it takes to build a product company and why in fact they have chosen comments by email, which is essentially the main feature of Postmatic to help drive engagement to blogs and get your tribe and get your community engaging more on your blog. Chris Lem is a big fan of Postmatic, so is Tom McFarlane. It's definitely worth checking out. There's a bunch of stuff in the show notes. Without further ado, let's go and meet Jason Lemur. G'day, Troy Dean from WP Elevation, and welcome to episode 76, I think it is. Uh, our special guest this week is all the way from Vermont, Jason Lemieux. Hey, Jason, how you doing? Hey, Troy, good. Did, good. I, pronounce, did I pronounce it right? It was great. Yeah, yeah cool, okay. <laughs> so you were saying the Canadian version would be Lemieux, and the Lemure. US version yeah. is Lemieux, right? Yeah. Um, now, you are from, for those that don't know, Jason is from a creative agency called Vernal Creative, which we'll talk about, and also, more recently, the Postmatic plugin, which allows you to send uh, comments to a WordPress blog via email. That's exciting. We're going to talk a lot about that. Um, but before we get into any of this, the competition this week, Jason is actually sponsoring a copy of Make Plus, which is the awesome uh, open source drag and drop layout page builder from the guys at Theme Foundry. Thank you very much for uh, sponsoring that. Now, let's be clear, sure. you are sponsoring a, um, a single site license of that, which is $99, I believe. And yep. in order to enter that competition, you're going to have to watch the interview and stick around for details because I'm not going to reveal that just yet. I'm going to make you wait. All right. Hey, Jason, before we start geeking off about all things WordPress, when you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? Uh, you know, I used to walk around in the video store. These were like the days of VHSs. And <laughs> I would see all these awesome covers on the big VHS cardboard boxes. And I just really wanted to design movie box covers and movie posters. So I guess sort of some sort of a uh, aspiring Hollywood graphic designer. Cool. Um, yeah, explosions. And yeah. so that's how I got started using Photoshop and right. led into, you know, creative business and stuff. So yeah, graphic designer for mostly guns and explosions. <laughs> Did you ever design yeah. a movie cover or a movie poster? Oh, plenty. Yeah, plenty. Well, you know, plenty of fake ones. Right. But <laughs> no, I never, I never actually, um, I did some book covers professionally, but I don't think I ever got to do any movie covers. We had someone else on the podcast that used to be a book cover designer. Um, I cannot for the life of me think who that is, but it's random because it's kind of one of those things that huh. you never realize people exist just to do that. You know, you like you never realize that's actually a job designing book covers. You know, I just thought yeah. it just kind of comes out of some big factory. I didn't even realize there were people designing book covers. Yeah. Well, think of how many books are published every day. It kind of is a big factory. It's yeah, like, right. <laughs> it's a big deal. And then each book might have like, you know, four editions, soft cover, hard cover, blah, blah, blah. Right. So there's a lot of book designing work out there, freelancers. So at what point did you discover the internet and realize that this was going to be something worth pursuing? I'm going to sneeze. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. So, there uh, you go. Let's see. So, um, yeah, well, so I'm, I, you know, I'm pushing my late thirties now. So, um, so I, uh, <laughs> I, I grew Sorry, up. Sorry, man. They normally uh, come in threes. I'm just letting you. I'm just warning you. We're two okay. down. There's one to come. Sorry, right, start again. Right. So you're pushing late thirties now? Did you say? Yeah, I'm pushing late thirties. So you know, I, I kind of grew up uh, in the day of BBSs, and and um, and so I, I sort of existed online in in the in the pre-internet era for for a while, and that that was in the early to mid nineties. And I don't think that the internet really came to our town in rural New England until. Uh, 1994 or something like that would dial up and and all that. So I, you know, so I cut my teeth as a web developer for almost uh, almost a decade just on dial up and wow. got. Oh my um, lord! Yeah, well, you know, I got really good at making really really efficient websites, and uh, to this day, I still really am into making sure everything is incredibly efficient, and uh, because of that, so it it was a. Uh, it was a good thing to do. Even, I mean, even here where I live now in Vermont, when when we moved here uh, ten years ago, we were still on dial-up here, and right until about uh, six or seven years ago, we were still on dial-up here. Wow! This very house, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So it was. It was. Those were the days. It was fun. 
I remember those days. Uh, I remember dial-up. My first modem, I think, was like a 7.7K dial-up modem or whatever it was. Yeah. And yeah. Um, do, do you remember the first website? you remember the first web page that you visited? <laughs> oh, that I visited? Yeah. Boy. Uh, I don't know. I mean, Yahoo was sort of the backbone of my internet existence for a long time. Um, and I, I definitely ended up hitting Yahoo a lot. I remember the first website I made was for like this uh, company that made smoked meats. Oh. That was happened to be in the town I grew up in, and I traded them for like a two two two. It was like two hundred dollars and a giant sack of beef jerky. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. And I was like thirteen years old or something, you know, and uh, that was great. <laughs> Noah Kagan from Absumo would be proud, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. um, Good. Uh, do you remember the first time you saw the WordPress dashboard? Yeah, I mean, it was. Uh, it might have even still been pre one point oh. Maybe still when it was in beta, long, long time ago. We were doing, um, at that point, I was doing a lot of develop and development work and freelance work, um, primarily in the nonprofit industry here in the states. And um, <clears throat> and so folks were starting to get excited about blogs for the nonprofit scene. And so we we were definitely early adopters um, back then of just setting up vanilla WordPress blogs. And um, yeah. I, uh, you know, I was trying to go through and remember the first year that I made a WordPress site. I don't, I can't really peg it. I can't remember the first one I made. Did, were, been, were you playing uh, with other CMSs at the time, or when you discovered yeah. WordPress, did you just think, "Well, this is what I'm going to stick with"? Yeah, we were uh, we were building things out in um, man, what was that called? Uh, type, type something. Man, I don't remember the name of it now. Right. I bet I'll find it by the time this airs. I can tell you was what it, it was. Was but, it mo mo movable type or? Well, yeah, we had done a bunch of movable type work as well, but um, there was something that was sort of like pushing the barriers of a blog platform more towards a CMS at yeah. that point. It wasn't Joomla, it wasn't Drupal. It was something esoteric that it's still around, but it's um, it hasn't evolved very much. Yeah. And uh, anyway, I, I don't remember. But yeah, we we did a lot of movable type work prior to WordPress, and you know, I kind of missed those movable type flat file databases. That sure sure made like bulk editing pretty easy, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but excuse me, I've got my water here. No worries. Um, um, so, how do you describe what you do in one sentence when you and, and thinking thinking about what you do as a consultant in client services <laughs> and what you're doing with Postmatic, which we'll talk about more in in a moment. When you meet someone for the first time and they say, "Hey, what do you do?" Have you, have you got like an elevator pitch? For the consultancy, uh, yeah, I mean, we we I would say that we uh, make content managed open source websites for. Uh, medium to large nonprofit organizations. Huh. So that that was our bread and butter for a long time, um, and and still is. We're you know, you know we're now trying to juggle, still having some of our client work and supporting our, our legacy clients while working on a product. But um, primarily, we we were very um, we were very big in in pushing the boundaries of WordPress as a CMS. You know, right from like version two on, we really started pushing it pretty hard uh, as soon as pages were introduced and um, did a lot of early work and a lot of early plugin development on um, opening the door to move WordPress away from a blogging platform and more towards a, a general use CMS because our our clients loved it you know I mean especially compared to during that time period that WordPress was in 2.0 Drupal was in like four or something and Drupal on the word on the nonprofit scene was huge and that was the kind of the de facto standard for content managed nonprofit websites built on an open source platform and um, and early Drupal uh, versions were they were really hard to use. They were hard to develop for, and they and the and the back end was really not uh, nearly as easy as even WordPress 2.0 was. So our clients just once we started moving away from Drupal and into WordPress, just just flocked to it. People just loved it. They still love it, and um, so we were in a good position there to put our eggs in that basket. D t tell me about the nonprofit thing, because I, I spent a lot of time talking to consultants who. Um, who like the nonprofit space, but don't, I'm just doing some research on you, by the way, while we're talking here. So excuse me for typing. Um, uh, sure. uh, tell me about the nonprofit space because there's this kind of myth that there's no money in the nonprofit sector, mm -hmm. and I know that's not true because I've had some some of my some of my most profitable and ongoing and fun clients and rewarding clients to deal with have been nonprofits. So tell yeah. me tell me um, or tell our listeners uh, more more likely why they should persist with the nonprofit space and not shy away from it if they think there's just that nonprofits don't have any money because that's just not true is it no it's not true I mean I made you know we made a, a good living for the last 10 years working in the nonprofit space um, myself and my my partner 
uh, Dylan Kuhn, who um, he's in Reno. And uh, we've worked together pretty exclusively for about six years now. And um, <clears throat> it's supported both of our families very nicely for quite a long time. Uh, you know, we, we charge usually a little bit lower hourly rate uh, in the nonprofit sector than we do for businesses. Um, <clears throat> but, we, but the differences in our prices are actually more based on geography than they are uh, whether you're a business or a nonprofit. I mean, we generally find that if we're doing work here in Vermont, you know, you, you can't get away with, with charging nearly what you can when we're doing work for, for large, you know, national organizations that are in the Bay Area, the San Francisco Bay Area or Washington area, D.C. And um, so we found it to be more about geography than business type. And um, there's plenty of money. And uh, I mean, we, we loved it because, you know, I, I came to this work from a political background um, and certainly had a, a certain set of, of beliefs and a certain view of the world that that um, I was passionate about, and so I was happy to kind of find work that I could put my heart in, um, no matter what project I was working mm. on. That sort of always made a big difference to me. Um, and when a project would come along that I couldn't get behind, um, I, w I would generally not not uh, be that much into it and sort of dread that project, and, and it wouldn't turn out nearly as good. So um, so we liked working in the nonprofit sectors because we could we could work on projects that we can get behind. Um, Dylan is, is really into um, ecology and uh, outdoorism and uh, so he, he really likes doing a lot of work for uh, you know conservation based organizations and he can really support that and um, there's there's plenty of money in it I mean they they are funded they're they're just have their their businesses they just happen to have a different tax status um, yeah. and there's certainly always plenty of money and they were easy to work with because the people are generally very kind mm. the nicest clients um, understanding patient, they're used to working in sort of a not so efficient environment sometimes, so mm -hmm. um, uh, so there there's always lots of, lots of patience, and if you have a project that isn't going so well, um, it's usually just okay, and yeah. uh, so it's been a wonderful space for us to work in. Yeah, how, how yeah. do you how do you when you say that if, if there was a project that came along that you didn't couldn't get behind or didn't believe in or didn't align with your values that you would pass on it, how do you? battle the fear of missing out on that kind of work because we all have that little voice in the back of our head that says well you know maybe we'll just do this one because the money will be good how do yeah. you how do you have the conviction and the the faith that it will be okay if you say no to this project that another project will come along that will be better a, a better fit <clears throat> we were always really really fortunate with this and with finding work and i'll probably have this similar answer to a lot of your questions that um you know in, in all of my time doing this work uh, I never really had any dry spells and every time I would start to get a little bit worried about saying no to a project or a little bit worried that nothing's really on the horizon every time it works out it just always worked out and we uh, as long as we did a really high quality um, work and we made our cu customers really really happy mm -hmm. then there was always more work coming in the pipeline from referrals and um, it just always it actually has always worked out and I don't I don't know if I'm extra super lucky or if other other freelancers have had that experience that if you just do a really really good job and you make people really happy there's always more work and that's mm. and maybe maybe it's involved in being in a certain niche like we're really you know we were very well known in the niche that we were in and we had very high customer satisfaction and and it always just kind of worked out because of that yeah Awesome. Uh, it, it, and you, you know, it's, you're kind of right. That probably is the answer to a lot of questions, especially in our, in our elevation round. Because if you were kind of talking to yourself, you know, 15 years ago, and your 15 years ago self said, well, you know, what, what are the fundamental things I should do if I'm going to start a business as a web design consultancy? It, it is, you know, narrow down on what it is you do best and, and who your ideal client is, and then just do a really bloody good job and keep them happy, and they will refer you other work. I mean, that's pretty much it in a nutshell, isn't it? That's been it for us. It really has. <laughs> and maybe, maybe, maybe the nonprofit sector is different that way. I don't know. I mean, it, it's, it's certainly a small, here in the States, it's a very small world. I mean, there's a small world of the amount of consultancies that are involved in it, and it's a small world in the number of organizations. I mean, I, I, have, I have clients that you know, uh, customers that I've, I've sort of worked with here and there for, you know, for 10 years that in the 10 years that we've worked together, they've worked at, you know, four different organizations and we mm. just keep having to cross paths because yeah. people just bounce around and, yeah. um, you know, it just, it just, and, and, and sort of once you start working with one organization, like if you, you know, at one point we were working with, um, 
like nonprofits that were in Berkeley, North Berkeley specific, specifically, and and they were um, organizations that were based on uh, you know the kind of deal where uh, instead of buying somebody a Christmas gift of a, a watch or something, you instead would buy a goat for mm-hmm. somebody in a village somewhere in 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 your your friend's name. Mm-hmm. And so we start getting involved in the, with these these gift giving charities. And once we did a one project for one of them, you know, there was a whole there was a whole network of them that were all kind of related and doing similar work. Some were maybe doing goats and some were doing cows and some were doing eye surgery. But they were operating in the same sectors of the world. They mm. had basically the same financial model, and they all mm. knew each other. Mm. And once you get into like one of those little niches, mm. it's just bam, bam, bam. And then we had a another sector, another time in our business that we um, we ended up working for just a ton of book publishers. This was the book cover time, mm-hmm. um, where we you know there's a lot of nonpro interesting nonprofit small book publishers out there, uh, and some of them are for profit, but are, are pub- we're publishing things that were really interesting to us, and we. Um, you know, once we did like one book publisher site and we did a really good job on it, we we spent the next four years doing sites for book publishers. It just happened. Yeah. You know? So it's once you can get into a get into a groove, you just go with it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What do you What do you spend most of your time actually doing day to day in in the in the well, I guess across the consulting work and and postmatic? Are you actually on the tools coding, or are you kind of managing processes and people? Um, a lot of everything. We're a really small shop. I mean, we're right now. There's there's uh, there's two of us full time and two part time, and um, so I I spend a lot of time. Uh, we haven't we haven't been doing any actual client uh, new client development since last March. I mean, up on a year almost now. Wow. Um, we've been doing support work for our existing clients, but we've been putting everything we have behind Postmatic um, for for almost a year now. So day to day, I. Um, for this last year, I'd been uh, mostly managing the team of, of three other people and um, doing all of the, the marketing work and outreach work um, and um, documentation and anything that involves words that people would read and pictures that people would look at <laughs> and says postmatic. <laughs> That's all right. me. Awesome. We're going to talk about postmatic in a moment. Um, what's the one thing that keeps you awake at night? My kids. <laughs> um. <laughs> everyone, everyone that has kids says that. <laughs> Do they? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. Yeah. It specifically was true from last night. I'm <laughs> still thinking about it. Um, uh, keeps me awake at night right now would, would be that, um, you know, we're bootstrapping this thing. So yeah. would be that we run out of money um, before we get this thing profitable and out the door. Right. Um, that's, that's basically the big one for me. Uh, we're going to explore that uh, very shortly in much more detail. What do you do when you're not working? Uh, I guess spend time with the kids, right? Yeah. Well, we. Um, so I, I've always needed to maintain this balance between an online life and an offline life, uh, big time. So um, we actually have a farm here, and um, I'm cool. a sheep farm. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so, so we farm. I farm, and we grow vegetables, and we have sheep and oh, great. cows and chickens and horses. And, awesome. Um, yeah, so um, so I, I do that. That's been that's most of my time is uh, running around outside. Awesome, that's yeah. that's that's awesome. My wife would just absolutely love to hear that. She's a big, <laughs> oh, she loves the whole you know self sustainable, grow your own vegetables, have your own eggs, have your own animals. She yeah. loves the outdoors and she loves she the loves whole. That. I mean, we both do, but I mean, she's she's constantly dragging me away from the computer to kind of get me outside to enjoy the real world. Um, yeah. I'm dragging her in front of the computer and coaching her through starting her own podcast. So somewhere in the middle, <laughs> nice. you know. <laughs> nice. That's um, great. Yeah. Yeah. If you, if you could wave a magic wand and fix one thing in the business right now, what, what do you think it'd be? Uh, I think it would be to have um, to have like two more developers, maybe one front end and one back end mm-hmm. developer. Um, we have a highly ambitious roadmap, and mm-hmm. um, and just not enough time in the day, and. Uh, uh, and it's some days we have enough money in the bank, and some days we don't. That kind of fluctuates a lot. Um, but to have the money and um, the money in place, and the um, the talent that's easy to work with lined up to bring some other people onto our team. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about uh, Postmatic. For those that don't know, in a nutshell, what is Postmatic? Sure, uh, Postmatic is a free and open source plugin for WordPress that uh, enables 100% email-based commenting. 
So uh, we do post notifications when a new post is published. It goes out to subscribers, just like maybe Jetpack does or mm -hmm. MailPoet or Subscribe2. Um, <clears throat> and folks can reply to that post notification to leave a comment. Uh, and their comment posts back to the web within just a few seconds. Uh, we also sort of serve as, a, as an update to um, subscribe to comments or subscribe to comments reloaded in that if you're leaving comments from the web side, you can subscribe to that certain post when you do leave your comment and any subsequent comments or replies will be sent to you, your email, and you can then reply. So you can reply to parent comments, you can reply to child comments, and basically completely interact with, with a conversation um, around a WordPress post completely in your inbox. Okay, a couple of questions that um, come to mind, first of all, why, before we talk about the specifics of Postmatic, why a product? Why, so you've been doing client services for quite some time, yeah. it's, you've been saying it's been very good to you and your business partners and supported your families, why move away from client services and move into the product space? Well, <clears throat> we got to a certain place in our, in our agency where um, we, we were kind of popular enough or well-known enough um, that we were taking on these these projects that were very, very large. And um, when we when we started out as an agency and we were doing, you know, let's say we were doing 15, 20 projects per year and they, they were, you know, five to ten thousand dollars each or something, that um, that that was okay and it, and it was kind of easy to manage our money and to manage the team and as, as we kind of got more successful we ended up working on these projects that had more like a you know a, a six to twelve month development cycle and mm. we'd only be able to fit in like two of them at a time right and so we we started living really feast or famine you know we'd be working on these giant projects that were great and they were so wonderful to work on and we'd be doing tons of plug-in development and um, <clears throat> and really be able to put our, our minds into something for a long time it was a nice break but you know we would we would, it was it was totally feast or famine and, and landing those sort of size jobs like a size job that you need to support a team of three for a year those size jobs just the sales process for itself just became untenable for us it was just way too difficult to land those jobs the amount of contracts and proposals and you know just landing the jobs takes six months and then doing them takes 12 months and so we, we found ourselves kind of like for a couple of years doing these enormous projects that it just felt like way too shaky ground I mean, always, of course, being a freelancer has felt shaky, and it's paycheck to paycheck sometimes. And um, but doing paycheck to paycheck, where you only get a couple of paychecks a year, um, granted they're big ones, yeah. really just got shaky for us. And um, we didn't, at that point, we didn't want to go back to working on a ton of little projects that didn't appeal to us for some reason either. So we didn't really want to do these giant projects that made us scared, and we didn't want to go back to managing a ton of little projects. And um, and we'd just been doing it so long that we were like, well. It'd be nice to have some guaranteed income for a while, and um, we had we had developed kind of the bones of this technology for one of our our clients, and uh, and it was wildly successful with them for for the particular niche that they were in, and we were like, geez, we're we're sitting on something pretty cool, and we've got some money in the bank, so we'll try it. We'll see what happens. So that's how we got here. Wow. And, and so the, the you know, this is a conversation I have a lot with WordPress consultants about moving towards a more regular, secure cash flow revenue model of having recurring revenue. So that was obviously something that was appealing as well, rather than, rather than having to secure job after job after job, having some kind of recurring residual income coming into the business. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's the big point is like if we could... If we could have enough guaranteed income kind of coming into the business that everybody's taken care of and um, and we can continue just kind of developing the product and building out what we love without having to do, um, you know, a, a ton of, of sales for processes that, that take months on end, um, then that sounds really good to us right now. Awesome. So um, the, my second part to the why question is why this product? <clears throat> yeah. Um, well, we, as I said, we, we had kind of the foundation of it built, and it's something that, I mean, WordPress has needed for years, and um, that we've wanted for years, and when we kind of had built uh, built it out a little bit for one of our customers, it, it really felt right. Um, it was a problem that needed to be solved. We, we, we weren't... Um, we weren't really entirely happy with the um, email notification plugins that were on the scene. They were, they were great for doing a notification, but we always wanted to reply. You know, It's like, why do I have to go to the web to do this? I just want to hit R, type a few things, and hit Shift-Enter and be done. 
and um, so it just felt like the right thing. It, it was a hole that needed to be filled. And um, so I'm kind of looking at this. I, I, I mean, the obvious question for me is you spoke a little bit about the roadmap and, and bootstrapping. The obvious question for me from a business model point of view is how are you going to make revenue out of this particular product? Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, well, our, our pricing models, um, our exact pricing hasn't been nailed down yet. But um, when, we, when we approached this, we, we, wanted to, we wanted to give back in a big way to the WordPress community because it's, it's supported us for a long time. And um, I've been, I'm kind of a guilty WordPress user in some ways that like, uh, I don't, I don't exist much online in general. Like I kind of don't contribute a lot online and I've always felt kind of bad about that. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe part of it is being shy or maybe part of it is wanting to live outside more than inside. <laughs> um, but I've given, I've taken and taken, taken a lot from the WordPress community and, you know, we've released a couple of plugins and I've certainly donated to a lot of plugins and supported financially a lot of plugins, but we haven't, you know, we've got, we've got like half a dozen under our belt, but for almost being around for almost 10 years, it's like, well, come on guys, what are you really doing? And so we really wanted to give back and, um, my partners want to kill me because I'm, I'm so adamant about this, but, um, we want to make this experience of post notifications and email commenting totally free for unlimited use as just consider it hey if you're running WordPress you can run this and um, and we're, we're pretty adamant about that so it <laughs> that said we've really set ourselves up for a challenge of how are we going to make a successful business out of this so um, so the plugin pretty much as you see it now is is uh, free and will be free uh, nearly identical to what you see in our beta uh, forever for anybody to use and um, we just want everybody to use it. It just needs to be there. So the pre, there will be a premium version, and um, we have a, a, a really aggressive roadmap with a ton of very interesting features coming out that will only be available in the premium version. So the free version will do post notifications, 100% email commenting, um, and and take care of all of that whole commenting side of things. Uh, but the premium version kind of is going to build things out in, with a huge emphasis on um, on um, uh, sorry, uh, I was, I, no, oh, never mind. I heard something that I thought I might need to attend to, but uh -huh. <laughs> I don't think I do. Sorry. Um, with, with a huge focus on, on higher quality conversations and engagement, uh, and, and even email marketing automation. So it's, we're going to take it, um, from its, from its bones of, of email commenting and, and then start doing more interesting things with what else can you do with comments and what can you do with these people who are coming by your site to say hi and give you their email address and never hear from them again. Um, and so, and also what, what other sorts of, uh, functions can you perform f uh, for managing your, your WordPress site day to day that, that could be easily done by email and just kind of taking our API and thinking of all the things that you could do from your inbox to help making ma mm. managing WordPress end users a lot easier. Mm. Nice. So the premium feature uh, model where the, the free plugin has a certain amount of features and then the premium, uh, the premium version has uh, additional premium features for those who might be in a position to use those features because they're actually making money from their website and they have an ongoing business, whereas the free version might be used by hobby bloggers or people who just want to increase engagement but don't actually have a revenue stream, so therefore won't be you know, paying or subscribing to premium products. Makes perfect mm -hmm. sense. Um, so <clears throat> tell, me, uh, tell me, because we had this little conversation via email or Skype, I think a couple of days ago before we, um, before we slotted this podcast in, and I was saying, because this really appeals to me, right? This plugin really appeals to me because we, like every week, we send out an email to over fifteen thousand people to tell them about the podcast. Right. And they come in, and every podcast we say, "Hey, leave a comment under the video and tell us blah blah blah," and you could win a prize, right? And we're going to do that a little bit later on here. Um, and you were saying this would be great to increase engagement and commenting on those prizes, and I think it would be too. So. Mm -hmm. And then you were saying that in order for that to happen, I would need to send that email notification out from using Postmatic from within WordPress, right? Right. So tell me, tell me how, tell me how that works. Is that, is that just using the the WP Mail function? No, no, no. You don't want to send fifteen thousand emails right. with I didn't WP think so. Mail, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. So how, so, so um, how are you managing that? <laughs> Uh, we um, we have partnerships with uh, a couple of enterprise level email providers, uh, Mailgun, um, 
and um, Mandrill. And so we, we handle the outgoing and incoming for the email. So the um, uh, everything goes out over Mailgun or, Mand or Mandrill. And this is one of the big differences between free and premium. So in the free plan, we hope to in the future be able to offer outgoing service to everybody as well. And we're looking at our, our, our financial model to, to try to make that happen. When we initially launch, um, I don't think we're going to be able to do it in the free plan. The free plan, you'll be at the mercy of whatever your web host's outgoing service is. Right. Um, the premium plan will be, of course, through through our servers, through Mandrill and Mailgun. So everything goes out um, uh, over there, and, uh, and everything, the replies come back into Mandrill or Mailgun, and then hit our servers, and then we post the comments up via the WordPress API back to your site. And um, so, yeah, so we handle all the outgoing. Because we, I mean, we have sites now that are running on our beta that um, are probably our largest site is, uh, that he's got about 5,500 subscribers, and he posts every day mm -hmm. at 7 a.m. to 5,500 people, mm -hmm. and um, which is a lot of email. And he has tons of comments, mm -hmm. and it's just this like enormous surge of traffic every morning. And um, how's that? Yeah, how's, so, that, how's that working out for you? It's working out great. I mean, it's fine. It, it works well. It's. Um, I think I, I think I know who that is, by the way. <laughs> no, no, it's it's not who you think it is. Oh, Actually, it's, it's really interesting. The oh. site is named the Cranky Flyer, and it's like an airline <laughs> an airline <laughs> industry news site. Right. And every day, they like post like what's going on in the airline industry, and he's got all the subscribers or like all these people that work in the airline industry that get on their phones every morning at seven o'clock and are like, oh yeah, here Delta's merging with US Air or whatever, and wow. and they all discuss it like crazy. I mean, the number of comments is crazy. It's out of out of control, and so we've been a cool asset on that site because um, everybody's just kind of having these conversations from their mobiles now instead of yeah you know, the, the, their laptops. Yeah. And, and there are people that are on the go. I mean, one of the cool things about what we do is like. Um, when you let's say you get a post into your inbox, right, and it comes in at seven o'clock, and you don't look at it until ten o'clock, you can reply to that post with a command, or just reply with a blank reply, and it'll subscribe you to the comments on that post. But in the subscription confirmation email that comes to you, we also throw all the comments in the footer of that email, so you get a copy of the post, and then you get the whole conversation that's happened wow. comes right at you right immediately. So you can just like grab that and read it later and chime in on whichever comments you want to um, all right from email. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's been great. I mean, it's uh, on that particular site, we've actually run into this thing. Um, that site's sort of hosted on like, um, you know, some of these boutique WordPress centric hosts that are popping up like flywheel and, and, and tap and those. Um, and, and we've noticed that some of those boutique hosts are um, throttling WP cron like very aggressively. Um, where we're in, we don't we don't run into that on on sort of more generic web hosts don't bother doing anything with WP cron they just let it run however it would want to run want to run and so um, that's something that was in version one of our API that that kind of bit us was we were relying on WP cron and then we were installed on these hosts that would throttle it every fifteen minutes or even other every thirty minutes right and. Uh, and that became a big problem, so we, we kind of had to rewrite our API to not rely on it so much. But it's been interesting that kind of generic GoDaddy hosts and, and things, they, they let you go wild with whatever you want to do with WP Cron, and, and it's these more WordPress-centric hosts that mm. are emphasizing WordPress performance that then throttle the heck out of it. Mm. And I understand why they do. Mm. Um, I just kind of wish they didn't. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> it's really interesting. Um, the, the mobile thing is the obvious thing that... A occurs to me is that being able to respond to these comments and continue the conversation from your tablet or your smartphone without you know or even from like I use mailbox on my air on my MacBook Air right even just being able to you know continue that conversation without having to go to a website and and even you know and on mobile some websites aren't even responsive so to actually continue that conversation on if you're on mobile just to do it from your email client i imagine is going to garner a lot more engagement than forcing people back to a website to use the native comments or use discuss or live fire yeah yeah we we noticed throughout our beta we've been in beta since july and we've noticed that our predictions were sort of that like we were going to increase engagement as far as the number of comments per post and increasing those averages. And and we've had, on the sites that we've been in beta, we, we certainly have increased those, um, but not nearly what we were hoping to. And initially we were kind of like, oh, well, I guess nobody's really interested in this. You know, commenting would go up 10, 20% or something. But um, 
But when we looked into it deeper, what we noticed is the length of the comments and the quality of the comments was substantially improved once people start commenting by email because they're in they're in their inbox. They're not worried about their browser crashing or the form submission timing out Ooh. or whatever. And they're used to writing these long prosy emails. You know, you write an email and you're just like pounding away and you're writing an email and pretty soon you're up to five paragraphs. And so on sites that, that we are on, um, we're noticing just the quality of the commenting and the quality of the conversation is like way up because people are just writing these love letters to each other, you know, and uh, it's it's pretty fantastic to watch. So we've been we've been really impressed with that. It's hard to, um, you know, give that some sort of a concrete um, a concrete number of how, you know, what, what, what is it that we're improving? Well, we're improving quality. It's not necessarily quantity so much. Um, it's more about quality and it's hard to um, substantiate that, but, um, but we can see it and the people that run us certainly notice it within their own communities. Uh, some of the sites that you're on, um, in the interest of transparency, we <laughs> were introduced by Chris Lemmer, who, yeah. uh, God love him, is just a master at connecting people and introducing people. H yeah. How did you meet Chris, by the way? Uh, well, uh, Chris did a post a couple months back about um, when the whole kind of discuss privacy thing started breaking a couple months back. It discuss announced their um, you know their plan to inject ads into the comment stream, and um, and that this was something that we had you know working in the nonprofit sector we had we had sort of been. Uh, privy to, to discuss his privacy policies for years because we had clients like the ACLU and things who, you know, were like, I'm not going to run that. I'll look at their privacy policy. And so we had sort of known that, you know, it was in their business model for, for a while that, um, that they, um, well, their, their privacy policy just was not necessarily as, as transparent or um, as obvious, I guess, as a lot of people thought. And um, so Chris, at, at the point that Discuss announced they were going to be inserting ads into comments, he dove into their privacy policy himself and um, uh, and, and got, wrote a post about it. You can find it on his blog and, and mm. made an announcement of why I'm leaving Discuss. And, um, you know, it was basically like it's – their business model is about data mining and it's about, um, you know, knowing who your commenters are and what their opinions are and, um, uh, and, and kind of doing a lot of tracking. And, you know, when you leave a comment on a Discuss site anywhere, it's kind of – you know, they're, they're farming that information about you and then you start seeing ads based on the things you're commenting on, on the mm. sites you're visiting. And that's been their model for years. People didn't quite realize it, I guess, but, um, but they do now. And so Chris had written a post about that and we were in the early beta at that point. And so I just kind of chimed in on his blog, um, being like, Hey, we're, you know, if you're looking at alternative commenting systems, here's what we're doing. And, and um, and so we just got in touch after that, and we've uh, we've started working together and, uh, since then. And he's he's been uh, he's been great to have around to talk to once in a while and bounce ideas off of. Awesome. And he yeah. mentioned in the email that he sent to me, he mentioned that um, uh, Tom McFarlane is using Postmatic on his blog, and that it and he said you can see the the kind of engagement and the the length of the comments being left on on Tom's blog as a a case study as to how. Postmatic encourages those more long form conversations. How did that yeah. how, how did your relationship with Tom come about? Uh I I totally don't remember. <laughs> um <laughs> I think he might have just I think he just he just had he read about us maybe he read about us from um post status. So uh, Brian Croxcar was was kind of the first WordPress uh ecosystem journalist to kind of pick us up and 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 did the first feature on us uh, back in the summer, and um, uh, and I think that Tom just applied to our beta program at that point. He was it's admi it's a, it's really admirable. Like he's he's so supportive of of people that are sort of trying to do innovative things in, in the WordPress scene, and and so brave. I mean, here he is exposing his enormous subscriber list to some beta software, you know, mm. and. Um, Oh, holy moly. Uh, and so he's been wonderful. He's been so generous to, to run us and to support us and to talk about us. And um, I think he just applied. And I, I saw, I remember seeing the beta key request come into my email. And I was like, whoa, Tom McFarlane wants to run us. <laughs> All right, let's do it. And um, he, his site was a big challenge for us too, though, because he was running, um, he was he's, his hosting a site on tap. He posted a, a post about that this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, who's, they're a cool host, but um, they're, uh, uh, there's a, there's a funny story about about writing about um, Tom running us. So when when he made the announcement on his blog that he was going to be, he doesn't know this story yet, but he <laughs> should know this story. 
when he when he made the announcement on his blog uh, that he was going to start running us, he, he kind of gave his users like two weeks notice or something. I think he was migrating from Jetpack and um, gave his, his, his users a couple of weeks notice. And he's like, one of the great reasons that I'm, I'm really looking forward to running Postmatic is that um, I make a note of replying to every comment on this site, mm. as you've noticed. And I'm really looking forward to being able to do that via email. And so <clears throat> he posts this about like not even 14 days, 11 days, 10 days before he says he's going to live December 1st or whatever it was. Mm. And so I see this post and <laughs> I just start sweating because at this point we were not supporting replies to inline to, to child comments or replies to parent level comments. So, so what would happen is if I posted a comment and then you replied to my comment, I would get a nice notification saying, hey, Troy replied to your comment, and here's what he wrote. But I could not reply back to send you a reply. Mm -hmm. My reply back would post a new uh, top-level comment. We weren't supported threading commenting in beta. It was weird. In our early tests, people were so confused by it that we were like, all right, we're not going to do threaded commenting. We're just going to do top-level comments. And here's Tom McFarlane <laughs> being brave to run us, and we've got eight days to make this work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fantastic! <laughs> I was like, "Oh my God, guys, we have to make this work." This is, we're, there's no, you know, what else are we gonna do? Tom, we can't let Tom down, and you know, and 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 just look like total idiots, you know. <laughs> so we pulled it off. We pulled it off like the day before, the day before he um, he was gonna launch with us. We we got it working, and and it felt so much better when we did. Um, it was just awesome because then we were truly a hundred percent. Like hundred percent email commenting. Anything you can do with comments on WordPress, you can do from email now. And um, so it was a huge improvement to our product that we were sort of gently pushed into. <laughs> awesome, <laughs> Mr. McFarlane. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, um, Tom. Cu couple of questions. What happens if I have an email signature and I resp respond to a comment? Does that signature get posted? No, no, it gets zapped out. Right. Um, so we take care of signatures. We take care of uh, out of office auto replies. Wow. Um, oh yeah, yeah, all that stuff. Uh, the world of email is just really fascinating. Like you know, there's such a huge like uh, number of interesting headers and stuff that you can sniff out of messages to figure out exactly what's going on. And so like all all of the out of office stuff is all just hiding in the header information of emails for the most part. There's a couple of weird like legacy Lotus systems that don't support the headers that we kind of have to be more intelligent about. But um, yeah, and the signature stuff, there's. Um, Mailgun itself has like a bunch of um, signature stripping stuff built right into their to their system, and then their their library that they've built for doing signature detection is they've released open source, and so we've built upon that to sort of add our own patterns and stuff that we've been seeing as well. So that's always improving. You know, we we hadn't seen one for a couple of months get through this system, and then we did see one this week. That was a, a whole new pattern that we hadn't seen before, but. Um, but you know, as we see them, we just zap them. We we dog food like crazy. I mean, every site that's on our system, I subscribe to, and every post that's on that site, I subscribe to. And I've been doing this for six months now. Wow! Just like looking at everything that comes through, and uh, yeah, it's like it's a job. How do you just, if you've got a if you've got a blog with you know lots of posts and lots of comments? How do you migrate to Postmatic? Well, everything's native. I mean, there's um, you know, so we just use native comments, and so. The, the, the only migration involved is if you're migrating over from a, um, a another system like Jetpack or subscribe to Comments Reloaded uh, or MailPoet uh, um, or even MailChimp or something. You know, so we've got different migrators involved that are baked right into the plugin. That you know, if you're the biggest is Jetpack. If you're running Jetpack now, um, there's you have your Jetpack subscribers and you have your people that have subscribed to individual posts. And so we built a migration tool, it's just single click, and it will copy your Jetpack subscribers um, <clears throat> and, uh, and create them as Postmatic subscribers, which are actually, Postmatic subscribers are just native WordPress users. So it creates users of the subscriber role with a little bit of fancy user meta to define what they're subscribed to, and that's all it is. And um, so it creates users um, out of your Jetpack subscribers, and um, we have that same importer from MailPoet. Uh, single click mail poet, single click jetpack, um, and we have a single click subscribe to comments reloaded importer that's in development now. It'll be available in a few weeks. 
Um, so it's just, yeah, and then for doing, we have a MailChimp importer that's probably we're going to develop. We've spec'd it out. We're still waiting to see if there's enough um, interest in that and people, because there are a lot of people, or like yourself, that, you know, maybe are pushing out their content via RSS through MailPoet or uh, through MailChimp or Infusionsoft or something like that. Mm -hmm. And so getting those lists out of Infusionsoft and back into WordPress um, is something that we're, we're writing more and more importers for. Mm. That was my, my next question actually is, because we run Discuss um, on our blog, which I'm now going to take a, a bit more of a deeper look at. This really appeals to me. One of the things that we do is we email from Infusionsoft several times a week. And sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes we tag contacts based on whether or not they've clicked on a link. So if I send a link out about this podcast episode, for example, and someone clicks right. on it, um, they right. might be tagged as a pod, as you know, podcast is their interest. So yeah. if we're running a webinar on podcasting, that'll be the first segment of our database that we mail a promotion to. So how how, how do you see solving that problem in the future? <clears throat> yeah, well, um, right now we um, we do not do click tracking. Uh, both the Mailgun and the Maildrill, Mandrill APIs uh, do support open tracking and click tracking, and we can get that data out of those APIs for mail that goes through our system. So that would be for the premium users. Um, and uh, we don't do click tracking right now, um, just because we haven't quite, uh, we're still working out our own privacy policy, and that just feels a little too invasive for us right now for, um, for while, while we figure out some privacy stuff. And so we do do open tracking, um, which just you know recognizes like, did a person open the email or not? Mm -hmm. And um, so we, we eventually are, you know, are building out our own analytics dashboard and, and ways uh, for, for if, pro, if our pro customers do want to turn on click tracking and have that data be able to get back to their WordPress um, database for, for manipulation in, in different ways. That's stuff that's in our roadmap of knowing who does read the emails, what do they click on, um, and then be able to segment them into lists or tag them appropriately and, and mm. things like that. So that's stuff that's all going to be built built in and technically is, is not that challenging. It's just kind of time and developers. <laughs> mm. could, you, could you subscribe? I mean, I guess the other way to do it is, and I don't know if technically it's possible because, you know, I'll let the cat out of the bag. I'm not the world's best developer. Shock horror. <laughs> um, but it, would, would it be possible to send a link to someone and have them subscribe to the post by clicking on that link? Um, subscribe to the comments on the post? Mm. Uh, <clears throat> that still need to be set up as a, as a user in the WordPress uh, database, wouldn't they? Well, no, they they wouldn't necessarily like. So, would that technically be possible? It would. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, right now, the way our um, subscription system works is it's it's primarily um, there's two ways to subscribe to a site. You can do it via a widget, um, or you can do it from an invitation. So, the widget, what it does is, you know, it's just like any sign up box that you see. It asks for an optional name and an email address, and when you um, you put your email into that box and you hit subscribe, we shoot you off an email. Um, which says, hey, uh, you have to double opt-in, essentially, right? So we shoot you off an email. If you then double opt-in and the response comes back positive, we create a user in the user database for you. And um, by default, we don't send you any user information. You have no idea that there's a WordPress user created for you, but that's what's actually happening is we create a user and we recognize, we do use user meta to flag you as a subscriber to posts or to that author or whatever it was that you subscribed to. Um, and likewise, uh, um, you can you can subscribe via getting an invitation. So one of the cool things we built in is we wanted to really jumpstart engagement. And one of the, the first features we built into the plugin once we got the, the bones of it working was um, <clears throat> when you install Postmatic, you can go to the invitation screen and you can send those same kinds of emails that people can opt in from uh, to people already in your community. So you can send invitations, you, know, you can tailor what they say and who they're from and everything. It sends this nice invitation. And you can say, send this to anybody that's ever commented on my blog mm. or send this to this list of email addresses or send this to anybody who's commented more than four times or commented more than five times wow. or time-based. Send this to anybody who's commented within the last week or within the last year or the last three years or whatever it is. So we do it by free frequency of commenting, um, when they last commented, 
or anybody ever or a list of email addresses. And we're really big on not letting people get subscribed to Postmatic sites without their consent. It's like mm-hmm. huge, huge, huge for us. Um, and so we send these invitations instead. You can't just you can't just like dump in a bunch of email addresses and have them all be subscribed. Sure. But you can dump in um, a bunch of email addresses and they get a nice invitation saying, "Hey, I'd love for you to subscribe to my site." All you have to do is reply to this email with the word "agree," and you're in. And um, so that's what the invitation system do. So it's been nice because there's been some sites in our beta that um, you know mostly like nonprofits that have had sites. Uh, that have been around for you know six years that so we built them six years ago and they've got like 2100 commenters wow. or something and these are actual people that like these hit your site they liked you enough and they liked your ideas enough to like leave you a note and give you their email address and now they're gone mm. right so mm. you can get them back with like one click send them all an invite and then you know you wake up in the morning and you've got a thousand subscribers awesome I, otherwise you wouldn't have it's cool yeah, I like it, works it. Really, it's I really, like really it a cool. lot we should continue this conversation offline because I'm really curious. To, I'm really keen to see how we could be using Postmatic at WP Elevation to drive more engagement, particularly on the podcast and our blog post now that we've got a whole new team of writers in our blog uh, this year. So yeah. let's continue this conversation offline. Okay. Um, All right, cool. Hey, let's do our Elevation round. Uh, for those that don't know, WP Elevation is a business accelerator program for WordPress consultants to help you build a uh, solid consulting business. So I'm going to ask Jason a series of quick questions and hopefully he'll give us a series of quick mind-blowing, earth-shattering answers off the top of his head. <laughs> uh, our, no pressure, dude. Um, yeah, yeah. What's the number one thing any freelancer or consultant needs to know? Uh, how to, who their customers are and what makes their customers tick and uh, what their customers are thinking. Mm, nice. Uh, yeah. What is the best thing you've ever done to find new customers? Um, find a good niche and do really quality work within that niche and, and they'll just kind of come. Nice one. Uh, how do you stop? How do you stop competing on price? Uh, <clears throat> we, you know, ignore the competition and just <laughs> do your best work and charge a fair price for it. That kind of takes care of you and takes care of your family and takes care of your employees or your partners and um, and just kind of ignore it all and, and do what seems right. Yep. Perfect. Yeah. Any tips on writing better proposals? Mm. My dad is a car salesman, oh. so. Yeah, yeah, all right. Oh. So uh, <laughs> for like 40 do, years. Do, was, do, you know, do you know Matt Medeiros from the Matt Report? A little bit, yeah. Right. His dad is also yeah. a car salesman. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice. You, you okay, guys should look up sense. and trade, trade war stories. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so we, don't, we don't do big proposals. I do phone calls. Yeah. We do, we do estimates. Uh-huh. Um, but I, I try to find some sort of personal connection to the potential customer, which in our niche is easy to do because everybody knows everybody. So when a job comes our way, I figure out who I know that might work there or that they might not or that they might know, get some sort of personal connection, get into car salesman mode, get on the phone, sell the job that way. And I mean, we've sold we've sold jobs that were, you know, nearly a hundred thousand dollar jobs with I don't even a proposal, just like here's wow. your estimate and a couple of phone calls. Wow. And, you know, like you can do it if you if you talk, 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 talk. Right. What is what is yeah. what does car salesman mode look like? <laughs> uh, I don't know. You just keep talking until they say yes. Is is that how it works? Uh, you know, you don't even talk business. I don't. Even, I don't even talk business. Probably with my client phone calls, and this drives my wife nuts when she's like in the room listening. Yeah. I don't. Uh, we don't talk business. We just talk about life, and we just talk about what's going on, and yeah. um, and and then maybe we spend forty percent of the phone call talking business, but yeah. really like sixty percent is just like, hey, what's up? Yeah. Building relationships. You know, how's, how's your mom doing? Yeah. yeah, it's and, and it's it's sincere. It's not insincere at all. I mean, these are people yeah. that I generally know one way or another, and yeah. um, and that that's all it is. It's just talking to people like they're humans. Awesome. Uh, favorite tool or system for CRM? Oh, this one. I don't know. I need one. I really need one. Uh, I've been juggling everything in my head. I have combination. All I have going right now is Help Scout uh-huh. um, and like a couple of spreadsheets and then my brain and yeah. I, it's starting to lose its effectiveness because I'm starting to drop the ball. Mm. And, um, and, uh, so I, I don't know what, what would about you? You have well, to answer this one for me. Well, it's funny. I mean, I've used just about every one of them on the planet. I mean, we're kind yeah. of fully in bed with Infusionsoft these days. Um, but yeah. I still really like contactually. 
I yeah. really love contextually because it reminds you what you're supposed to do every day based on <laughs> the relationships that you're building with people. And, you know, if they're a warm lead, yeah. they get automated articles sent to them. Contextually is really good. And it's probably yeah. one of my favorite tr because it's truly about managing the relationship with the customer. It's not just about somewhere where you can store your data, which is what yeah. eff effectively what high rise is like. Right, High rise is right, just right. somewhere where you can store your data, but it doesn't tell you what you're supposed to do next. Yeah, yeah, cool. Hey, well, actually, when I was doing a lot of freelancing work uh, for your readers, I don't know if anybody's mentioned this one, Pipeline Deals. Oh, uh, yeah, right. PipelineDeals.com, that was my favorite for years when I was doing, like, lots of small jobs. It's more of a sales tool than a CRM, but it's kind of CRM-ish too. But you've, like, list out your proposals, what are the next steps, what do you need to contact with the notes on all that, and it, and it did a good job of telling you, like, here's for your sales flow, here's your next steps. So and I really liked that when I was when we were doing more agency work. Uh -huh, very good. I like it. Um, yeah. I'm going to link to that in the show notes, pipeline deals. And um, what's the best way to keep a project and a client on track? Yeah. Um, get them on the phone. I mean, uh, we, we, for any project that was like a, <clears throat> a four-month or longer project, we would do uh, phone calls twice a week. We would do a phone call on usually on Tuesday and on Thursday. Um, not on Monday and Friday, but Tuesday and Thursday. So you have a little padding on either side. Uh, scheduled phone calls twice a week. Make that in the contract. This is what we're doing. You have to make these phone calls. Um, and uh, that that was always our number one way of just being disciplined enough and setting aside that time to like get on the phone twice a week for an hour. I like it. Uh, there's, you know, someone, I, I, someone also said this to me, but I've realized over the years, nothing beats FaceTime. But if you can't do FaceTime, yeah. voice time is just, it's much better than emails and, you know, just having that. Because you, you can hide so much in emails and you can even hide a little right. bit on, on voice calls. That's why I still run a video blog. Even though I know that only 37% of people actually watch the videos in the podcast, I still mm. like to do a video podcast because I figure the people I'm interviewing can't try and pull the wool over my eyes if we're actually looking at each other. Yeah, right. I think you get Although a more, you're your video locked up about um, 45 minutes ago, so I've been looking at a still picture of you that looks like this. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. Oh, bummer. <laughs> uh, so you're pulling the wool over my eyes. Right. Fine. Excellent. <laughs> well, I'm actually naked here right now, so... <laughs> <laughs> uh, any, ideas for, all right, any ideas for getting referrals from existing customers? Uh, you know the answer to that. Yeah. Just do your job and do it really well. Yep. Um, you know, we have hit hard times before where we've had to reach out and actually market ourselves, right? But re reach out um, to our previous customers and be like, hey, we've got some free time in our schedule. Um, and there's no there's no harm in that, you know? And swallow your pride and write to your old customers and say, we've got some free time. Um, you know, if you need to offer a discount, like, hey, we're, you know, our June is open and we're happy to do work at a 20% discount if anybody has anything that needs doing. And you get work right away. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, finally, what's the number one thing that you can do to differentiate yourself? <clears throat> Me or any freelancers? Well, <laughs> Pret pretend, pretend you're talking to someone who's just starting out. I think that the, uh, the number one thing you can do is to bring an element of your offline life into your business and your, your, your brand and personal persona. Mm. Um, you know, I, I've, I've got to say that uh, th throughout my career, um, my my life outside of work has been uh, of interest and, and sort of fascinating to the people that are operating with our niche, and I you know I'm totally guilty of of taking very important conference calls um, outside within within earshot of various farm animals and having a rooster or a, or a lamb start baying in the, in the middle of a phone call and, and everyone's like, what was that? Was that a sheep? And everybody thinks it's the greatest thing ever, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, and sort of just like get out of the office and, and, and don't try to be so professional and uh, be, be pleasantly casual um, without sticking your foot in the mouth, which is always my problem. But, you know, bring, bring some element of your personal life um, into your work and into your persona so that people will remember you as such. Awesome, great advice. Hey, um, this has been epic, and uh, you know, this I, I could just keep talking about this stuff for, forever. Um, but we should yeah, wrap up. I'm conscious of uh, everyone's time. Uh, where can people reach out and say thank you for this interview, Jason? Yeah, well, uh, thank you so much. We're we're on Twitter. Um, Go Postmatic is uh, our Twitter, and the web is gopostmatic.com. Cool. And uh, my 
you can you can email us through there and everything. But yeah, Twitter and the web is, is best for us. Sweet. I will uh, put everything that we've talked about in the show notes here, which will be at wpelevation.com slash Jason Lemur, which is L-E-M-I-U-E-X. Is that right? No, 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 no. L-E-M-I-E-U-X. Oh, yes. What did I say? I-U-E-X. Good attempt. Okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, let me yeah. get that right. It's, it is. It's tricky. It's Jason Lemur, which is L-E-M-I-E-U-X. I E U X, okay, and um, it is not Lemmy X, it is Lemure. Um, I E U X, there we go, no spaces, hyphens, or other funny hieroglyphics in that pretty link. It is just wpelevation.com slash Jason Lemure. L E M I E U X. Awesome. Hey, final question Who would you like me to try and interview and why? Uh, I've got a good one for this. So <clears throat> there was a guy, um, Christian, who. Um, he was involved in WordPress development for a long time. Uh, his Scribu was his was his name or his handle. It's S C R I B U dot net. Scribu dot net. He wrote um, front end editor. He was the lead dev on WP CLI for a long time. He wrote post to posts. He wrote these like what I considered incredibly critical plugins at very timely um, important important uh, periods of WordPress's history and. Um, and it was just just this visionary, amazing, amazing kid. I mean, he was a kid too. Like he was a kid, and we we used to we used to work with him a lot. Um, on we we uh, contributed a lot to a lot of his plugins, and he contributed to ours for years. And um, and it's a tragedy. He he disappeared off the face of the WordPress earth earlier this year. I think he kind of got burnt out on WordPress, and he's moved on to dabbling in Haskell and Python and. Um, doing machine learning stuff and right. always fascinating stuff. His Twitter is really fascinating to read, but he was this amazing asset to the WordPress community that I I really miss and um, and uh, he he just brought so much and and uh, I would love to know the story there and maybe there's a lesson for for the larger community uh, in in whatever his story is. Awesome. Well, Scribu and I think your full name is Silvio Christian Berker. I know I've pronounced yep. that wrong and I do apologize, but I'm coming to get you courtesy of Jason Lemure. So keep your do eyes it. on your inbox uh, because we will get you on the podcast. Also co-organizer of WordCamp Transylvania and he was the lead developer yeah. on WPCLI for 3 yeah, years. Yeah. So uh, Yeah, he hatched that thing. He's, yeah. He's amazing. He's he's totally amazing. Sorry, Scribu, to pull you into this. Hopefully, you'll come on the show, though. Awesome. Yes, well, I hope he does, too. Hey, Jason, yeah. thank you so much for spending uh, over an hour with us here on the WP Elevation podcast. I really appreciate it. Anytime. And I know Anytime. it's late where you are, man, so I really do appreciate it. And I wish you all the best for Postmatic. Uh, keep us informed and keep us up to date, and let's continue this conversation offline. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. It's been fantastic. I do another hour, too. We'll do it sometime. <laughs> cool. Cheers. All right. Thanks, man. Bye-bye. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that episode of the podcast as much as I did. I was fascinated uh, getting to know Jason's journey and how they're transitioning away from client services into a product company. It's going to be very interesting to see how Postmatic rolls out over the next few months. Again, this episode is sponsored by Video User Manuals. You know the drill. Seriously, if you're building websites for clients using WordPress and you're not using this plugin, what are you doing? Uh, Check it out at videousermanuals.com or wpelevation.com slash vum. Check out the funny little video that my wife and I made. I think my dog features in the making of as well somewhere. Anyway, subscribe to the podcast at wpelevation.com slash subscribe and we'll give you access to a free content creation webinar. I think that's what we're giving away at the moment, uh, which will teach you how to create content regularly and consistently and content that's not boring, content that is actually engaging. And you can also teach this stuff to your clients. So there you go. You could actually take this webinar, uh, learn from it, and package it up into a little product and just teach it directly to your clients and charge them as a little consulting fee for teaching them how to create content. There you go, you can have that one. Uh, All of the show notes for this particular episode will be at wpelevation.com slash Jason Lemur, which is spelt, let me get this right for you. It is spelt J-A-S-O-N-L-E-M-I-E-U-X. J-A-S-O-N-L-E-M-I-E-U-X. And it's pronounced Jason Lemieux if you're in the States or Jason Lemur if you're in Canada or Jason Lemieux if you're an Australian like me. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. Uh, what else is there? Oh, that's right. Leave a comment underneath this video and tell Jason the number one thing you would like to see in WordPress comments. Jason is giving away 
a single site license of Make Plus, the awesome drag and drop builder valued at $99. So leave a comment under the video and tell us the number one thing you would like to see in WordPress comments. And I'll get Jason to swing by in a couple of weeks, go through the comments and award the prize. Uh, who's on next week? I don't think we have next week worked out yet. We're about six weeks in advance here. So I'm shooting this on the 6th of February going live I think early April so I actually don't know who's next we're that far ahead in the podcast which is great but anyway I'm sure next week's guest is going to be awesome stick around for that get on over to iTunes if you're an Apple user and please subscribe rate us and review us it helps us come up in the search results and it helps us help more WordPress consultants and if you're an Android user get on over to stitcher.com and follow us on Stitcher and leave us some feedback over there. I hope you're enjoying the podcast as much as I am. Of course, my name is Troy Dean. Until next week, go Elevate.